I feel like, uh, you know, we'll talk about fighting, but we're going to start with the suit. I mean, that's that's a sharp look there. Ste stepping the game up for media day these days. Thank you, man. I'm trying to uh, be a little bit better, a little bit smoother. Thank you to Mark Russell, Custom Clothing, man. He's the he's the best. That's best awesome. in the game. That's awesome, man. Well, let's talk about how you're feeling at this point. I mean, uh, are you feeling good about the fight happening on Saturday? Are you a little bit worried that uh, another opponent change or something crazy could happen on the way? I'm just happy to be fighting at this point, um, ready to get the rest of the job done, cut the weight, make the weight, rehydrate, and um, just fight and go home. That's kind of my thing. I'm just ready to do it. What, what if they came to you tomorrow and they're like, hey, we got some bad news. Chris is out, but we've got another guy. We've got another opponent. The next opponent would be in. Uh, at this time, for me, I'm pretty <clears throat> excuse me, simple. When it gets to this point, I've invested so much money into the camp, into myself, into being away from my family, whatever the case may be, I have to fight. There's no, um, oh, I can take a little break. Financially, I have to fight. At this point in my life, that's where it is. And um, I still feel I'm the best in the world. So I should be able to beat anybody. So that's why I'm here to fight. And that doesn't change. Yeah, definitely a solid attitude. Is it challenging to, to keep that attitude? You know what I mean? Is it difficult to be like, oh, now we got to prepare for another guy, prepare for another style, whatever the case may be? Sometimes. Sometimes it is. But then at the end of the day, I just try to remind myself, especially if I have my, my kids around, it's like it's for them at the end of the day. It's for my children. They got to eat. My wife's got to eat. So I got to eat. So um, this is what I do. I fight. Uh, I'm not bad at it. So... And as I said, I feel I'm the best, so I should be able to beat anybody in the world, especially when I have a camp. No matter who I'm training for, I'm in shape, I'm ready to go. Everything's sharp, so I should be able to make the adjustments if I have to and get the W. Chris is a guy that's obviously been around for a long time, so uh, when they came to you with the name, I mean, were you familiar with his body of work, with his, with his style, all that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, he fought my teammate last, um, fought on other teammates before, friends of mine before, so definitely I knew who he was. And um, excited for it. Yeah, he's super experienced, right? But I mean, is there anything that he does in particular that you look at and say, "Man, we're, we're this is a trouble spot. We got to stay away here. We got to be aware." Not really. I feel like I do everything better than him. Obviously, there's like everyone else, you have to be cautious. Everyone has a puncher's chance, and um, I feel pretty tough with any punch that I see coming. But still, you never know. So. Obviously, the goal is just to make him miss and make him pay for that and go from there. Win here. You'd have a nice winning streak. Of course, the person you had a setback to is at the top of the division now right now. So, I mean, you pick up a win here. Do you feel like it's time for you to start getting some recognition that maybe you aren't? I mean, do you feel like maybe you're not getting the respect you deserve at this point? I mean, it, I feel like it's kind of been like that kind of like my whole career. I've had some stumbles when I was younger and um, right in front of the bosses. So, um, I've had to earn my way back, but... Looking back now, I wouldn't change it. it. It made me how I am today, who I am today. So it's the, it was necessary per se. And I guess you could say I'm happy it happened, but um, I, I feel like there's really nothing that I haven't seen, nothing that I haven't been a part of. So I'm comfortable everywhere. I feel I'm good everywhere, mentally, physically. Uh, I'm just uh, different and it's still changing. It's still, I'm still evolving, I'm still getting better. And uh, I turned 26 at the end of this month, so, you know, still a lot more to go. And um, I don't feel like these guys – I feel I'm cut from a different cloth. I feel like I'm just built different. And um, I feel that way, especially fight night. I feel invincible, especially in the back. I, I feel invincible. And um, that's a feeling that I felt these last two fights. And, you know, they went how they went. And um, – Obviously, my goal is just to get that one f loss back in the UFC. That's the only one that really just sticks right in my side. <laughs> do you keep chasing that one? I mean, do you, or do you just have to just, like, hope it happens? Or do you keep calling the guy out and hoping that he'll, he'll take it again? Well, I think we all know here he's not going to take it again, which, you know, if I'm being a businessman, okay, um, it doesn't make sense right now. Eventually, the fight will make sense. And um, I don't know, man. He's a, he's a big talker, but it's, to me, it's a facade. And um, I just, I don't like him. I don't like him as a person. I don't care for him. And um, I think that's what makes it real rough. And then it's just the fact that, like, like I don't care what most people say, but some people are like, man, and when you hear it over and over, it's like you got your ass beat. I don't know what fight you watched, but I won that first round. Like, okay, judges may give it to him off of a, a takedown, 
but he if you go back and really watch the fight he didn't hit me like there was one one that he busted my lip when i stepped in on a jab with the last 20 seconds other than that i parried his right hand the whole time and it just gave me a brush burn he was the one bleeding he couldn't really walk like uh, it is what it is but i can't think of that you know eventually it'll make sense and um that's what I'm focused on is just me continuing to grow, get better, and eventually it'll make sense. And when that time comes, I promise I'll, I'll, make, uh, I'll make headlines. So let's say you win here. UFC comes to you and says, you're not going to believe this. We either got a title fight for you or we got Sean. It pays the same. It's the same. Sean, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for half the money. <laughs> I don't, the money's not the problem. Like, um, I'll, I, like when we heard uh, Strickland pulled out, I, I literally text – Mick and was like, I'll fight him and still fight Brad the next month. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Like, at the end of the day, I'm a man first. And when you disrespect me as a man, okay, well, unless we have a contract, keep the same energy out here. Like, don't tell me you're building um, hype or you're doing this, or you're doing that. At the end of the day, I'm a man. I'm not going to disrespect you as a man unless I really want to fight you. If I really want to fight you and I really want to hurt you, I'm going to disrespect you as a man. That's just, um, I don't talk about people's families. I don't talk about their religion. You know, I don't talk about those things. Those, to me, those things are off, off limits unless you really have a problem. And he crossed those lines. And I feel like he's crossed those lines for many other people. Um, but for me, I'm just, like I said, I'm different. I, I feel like I'm, I was raised from a old, my father's real old school and real Southern. And he rubs off on me, I guess. I guess that's where I get it from. But I feel that way. Like what I say in these interviews, what I say to anyone, I mean that. It's not me talking shit. I don't, I'm not talking shit. That's what I believe. At least at that moment, I believe that. Could it change? Of course. If he come up to me and said, I apologize for what I said about your kid, um, things like that. The beef is squashed. Do I have respect for him? I have more because you come up to me as a man and apologize. But I don't have like the ultimate respect for you at that point but i have more respect and the beef is squash at that point do i want to fight you again of course but it's not like it is right now where it's like if i see you and you say something kind of reckless to me we're fighting or if you even give me a look we're fighting and i don't care about the the repercussions i don't care about the penalties i don't i don't care about none of that it's it's not about that to me that's just how i am i, I at some points i wear my emotions on my sleeves when you talk about certain things to me so that's just how I am. It is what it is. I'm, I'm me. I don't change for nobody. Well, you've convinced me. I want to see this rematch now. We need to get it done. Uh, obviously, right now, though, you got Chris. Uh, so last thing I'll ask, I mean, you know, obviously the goal is a victory. But, I mean, do you feel like you need to make some kind of statement, you know, do you show the world something, like get disrespect that's kind of eluded you a little bit? No, man, I don't really care. You know, I, I feel like I'm a top ten guy. I've tried to get top ten guys. I've, tried, I've had two opportunities at top 15 be taken from me from something outside of my control. And, um, you know, at this point, it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going out here to prove something. I'm going out here to win. I'm going out here to get two checks and finish you. I, I'm coming to finish every time. And um, if, as long as I get this win like I plan to, you know, um, you know, I hope to see Darren Till next year. That's, that's the one I'd, I'd really like. So that's my plan. But obviously my plans don't mean really too much if they don't line up with, you know, the matchmaking. So hopefully that's in the cards. Like I said, I've, I've been right there at top 15. I've beat really good guys. I've beat the toughest guys that I could get my hands on. And um, I don't see why not, you know, to me, but it's not up to me.